Headers. I'm coming to you today from our church. Um, I made the trip down because today is Thankful Thursday and we're talking about things that make us thankful. And when I really think about the things that God has given me that I'm thankful for, church is one of the top things on my list because this church, I was lucky enough to be born. Um, my family has attended Bellevue Baptist Church for as long as I can remember. In fact, I came to this church when I was just a little baby um, and I was baptized here and I was married here and I've been able to bring my two kids here as well. Um, our church is really amazing about supporting one another and it's a great place to worship and be. So if you ever have a chance to come see us at our church, that would be amazing. We would love to have you. Let us know how we can support you and be praying for you and it would be our joy to do that for you. Um, I'm now gonna take you to my second favorite place of church this is what we call our church memorial garden and this memorial garden was put here by my aunt karen and all the trees and a lot of the plants that you see here were purchased and put here in memory of other members of our church um, and we talk about our church family a lot here and i do feel like the people who belong to this church are like my family, my spiritual family. They're not necessarily all, we don't all have the same last name, but we all love and support one another. And I think that's God's best plan is for families to support one another. And you've learned about through Talking Tuesday and Thankful Thursday, you've learned about Work It Out Wednesday, you've learned about working together as a family. And so I just wanted to address that, that there's also your church family. So. When we're talking about Thankful Thursday, um, inside your bags is your paper and our three Bible verses around here. It's in Colossians chapter 3 and it's verses 14, 15, or no, 15, 16, and 17. And it says, And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And so that means the church is supposed to work together to support one another. And we're going to talk a lot more about that tomorrow on Friday. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. So I hope this week as you've been able to sing our songs with us for Bible school, that you've done that with um, joy in your hearts and thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in work or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And so what I really take from this lesson is that, yes, we are all one body of Christ. All the church members work together for God. And that we should be thankful in the things that we do and the ways that we can serve God. So I've served God in lots of ways growing up. I have weeded this garden that I am sitting in right now. I've helped to plant some new plants in here. I've done some Bible school lessons. Um, and I tell you all these things not to make myself better, but to tell you that God has, I'm thankful to God that he's given me gifts. He's given me the strength and the health to do these things. Um, and so what I would like for you guys to do is to really focus on being thankful because a person that has a thankful heart that thanks God for all the good things is very, in my opinion, they're very desirable to God. God wants happy helpers. <laughs> he wants people who are thankful and who are serving of others and humble. So I hope that not only today are you thankful, but that also you look for how you can serve God. Um, I wanna end today with saying a prayer of thanksgiving and just to help you get through your day, pray for you guys for coming and joining us. Um, and I am so thankful I'm thankful for God for sending his son Jesus so that we have the promise to get to heaven if we believe in him and are baptized. I am thankful to this church for all the gifts that they've given me and my church family for loving and supporting me in hard times and great times. And I am especially thankful um, for my, my own family and my homestead, the place where I can live and worship God. Um, so I hope that today you can find some things that you're thankful for. Maybe you can make a list together as a family or on your own. And when we say our prayers, we want to close our eyes and focus all of our attention on God. Dear God, thank you so much for this special vacation Bible school on the homestead. 
thank you for all of the boys and girls who are learning about you this week. Lord, I pray that they learn a little bit about you, that they're able to come and join us at our church. And Lord, I pray more than anything that they can go to heaven with you and just live there eternally. Lord, I just um, want to come with you with a special thanks for our church for, and for our church family. And thank you mostly for Jesus and for giving him as the ultimate sacrifice. Lord, just please be with those who are sick and who need you. And thank you once again for our Bible school. In your holy name I pray. Amen. That's all. Have a thankful Thursday. Our um, Bible character for Thankful Thursday is Hannah. We were thinking about, in the Bible, all of the characters that we know to be thankful. And we really like the lesson about Hannah. So we learned Hannah's story in the Old Testament in 1 Samuel. So in 1 Samuel chapter 1, it tells us that in her deep anguish, Anna prayed to the Lord, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly, and she made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head. So Hannah knows that God has the power to give her a baby and she says, Lord, if you will give me a son, I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life. So basically she's telling God, if you give me a son, I will give him back to you. And so we hear that she went into the church and she was praying. And the priest said to her, go in peace and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. And she said, may your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something and her face was no longer downcast. And I love this verse because it teaches us that Hannah had great faith. When she was told that um, may, your, um, may the God of Israel grant what you have asked of him, when she heard them say that, she had faith that God was going to answer her prayers and she was no longer downcast. She was no longer sad. And then it says, early the next morning they arose and worshiped the Lord and then went back to their home. So in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, because I asked the Lord for him. So God kept his promise, and he gave her a son, and she named him Samuel. So some time passed, and she said to her husband, after the boy is weaned, so meaning when the baby grows up a little bit and doesn't need his mom anymore, I will take him and present him before the Lord, and he will live there always. She's going to take him to the church, and, and he's going to stay there. And her husband says, do what seems best to you. Stay here until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord make good his word. And so she did. After he was weaned, she took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. When the bull had been sacrificed, they brought the boy to Eli, the priest, and said to him, Pardon me, my Lord, as surely as you live, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I will give him to the Lord. For his whole life he will be given over to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. And so Samuel stays, and Samuel does some amazing things in the Bible. You can read his story in 1 Samuel. Um, and also, Hannah says a prayer of thanksgiving, and you can read that in chapter 2 of 1 Samuel. So, I hope that you'll be like Hannah, and you'll be thankful in all ways, and have faith when you pray to God that he'll answer your prayers, and be thankful to his answers. All right, thanks guys. <music>
to Homestead Crafts, you'll find that in your bag for Thankful Thursday, you have a plastic wrapper that contains a wooden church birdhouse. Now, we noticed when we opened these that they did not come with any form of directions. So, we thought we probably needed to make a video for you. So anyway, basically what you're doing is assembling a wood puzzle. You're going to look through your pieces. You should have one piece with lots of just all slats and then it says Oriental Trading on the bottom. This is your base piece. This is going to be the bottom of your birdhouse. And then you'll see a couple pieces that have just like two notches at the bottom. These are going to be the side walls of your church and they will fit down into the base like so. And then you will have the two ends. Now, one of the churches looks like this and it has the cross inlaid. And so this one you can see actually is a, it's a strange shape. It doesn't have a rec, it doesn't, it's not a rectangular because it, it has an angle. This one's a little bit harder to put together, so we'll do this one on the video. And then there's another one that this one just kind of goes down into a square, so it's a little easier for that piece. Nonetheless, here's how you do it. We've got the long sides, and then we'll take the ends and place them on. You might want to take it off, and you will fasten the sides together. And then you'll slide them down into the base. We did notice that um, they're pretty, they can be really tight on the sides. So you might really have to force it in through the slats there. If you do it more than once, it's a little easier. <laughs> but you might only have one in your crate, so. If you have little ones at home, you might decide that the parents can be the, the church birdhouse builders and the children can be the master decorators. They could use their markers or their paint to decorate the birdhouse. They could put some of the things that they're thankful for, try to fill the roof with all their gratitudes, things that they're grateful for, since it's Thankful Thursday. One side finished. You can always rewind or fast forward if I'm taking too long. See the fun you're missing out on if you don't have any homesteaders at your house? In case you have a faulty church, <laughs> a faulty birdhouse, I shouldn't say that. a faulty birdhouse, we did leave some extras outside of the church on the porch. So if you end up, like for example, one piece I opened was missing a bottom. So if you don't want a bottomless birdhouse, you could maybe see if there's some extras still at church if you're in the neighborhood. So close, yet so far away. And once this last piece, there we go. Now that this piece is in, make sure the bottoms, it's kind of easier to There we go. So we now have walls and a floor for our church. And then you'll see these last two pieces that have the slits. These are gonna be your roof pieces and it's gonna slide on. There's a slat on the back that you'll have to slide the piece into. Sorry, I'm working on it. See on this back side, not to put it like that. And then you can slide the other piece onto the roof. And then for the other side, there's a slot on the back and on the top for that slide in. 
Here we go. The last thing that you will find in your bag or in your pile from wood pieces is this string. And you can use that as a hanger so that you can hang your birdhouse in a tree or on the porch, wherever you see fit at your homestead. I hope that you'll remember all the things that you're thankful for. I'm thankful for finishing this craft. Thank you.